do it. Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Star Wars Coffee, where today we're going to be talking about some of the critics' reviews and the Rotten Tomato score for The Rise of Skywalker before it debuts here in the US. That's today here on Star Wars Coffee. I have spoken. Hello there to all of the returning subscribers, but if you're new to the channel and you're just finding me for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button on this video and any other video from the channel that you check out, and be sure to hit that notification bell so that the bell is completely filled in, as this is the way you will never miss a new video the second it goes live. Do it! Alright, so we're going to be talking about some of the critic reviews for The Rise of Skywalker, it's debuted in parts of the world already, but we're going to be getting the US release tomorrow. I will be seeing it tomorrow on the 19th, that opening night preview, and then it debuts technically on Friday, December 20th. But for those of you who want to hear some of the reviews and get a consensus as to what the critics think, personally, I don't care about that, but I know a lot of people do. And so here we go, talking about the rise of Skywalker in terms of critics. What I've done is sorted it by what are, according to Rotten Tomatoes, the top critics. I have no idea who any of these people are, but I will read off their names just in case you do. But before I did that, I thought we would go take a dive back and take a look at what they said about past films. So let's start. Currently, The Rise of Skywalker sits at a rotten 59%. And then going back to the last film, Solo, a Star Wars story sat at a fresh 70%. The Last Jedi was a fresh 91%, Rogue One was a fresh 83%, The Force Awakens was a fresh 93%. Going back to the George Lucas era, Revenge of the Sith was a fresh 80%, Attack of the Clones was a fresh 65%, and The Phantom Menace was a rotten 53%. Return of the Jedi was a fresh 82%, Empire was a fresh 94%, and A New Hope was a fresh 93%. So let's take a look at the most important part of these, which is what the Disney ones are, because that's what this current film goes into. So The Rise of Skywalker with that rotten 59%, and The Last Jedi with a fresh 91%, a Rogue One with a fresh 83%. So you're telling me that The Last Jedi is a better film than Rogue One. I feel like 95% of Star Wars fans will be disagreeing with that. And you mean to tell me that The Force Awakens received a 93%, which is the same score that A New Hope got. I would say many fans would disagree with that as well. And so I just wanted to set the stage there so that you can see what these critics think based off of their track record. So it doesn't really hold too much water for me personally, but I just wanted to read a couple of these off so that we could see what some of these top, so supposed top critics think. Okay, so... Peter Travers, certified at Fresh, gave the score a 3.5 out of 5, saying, The final episode isn't perfect. You'll nitpick it forever with your friends, but that's the point. Star Wars isn't a movie, it's family. We're that close to it, and the infighting about what it does right and wrong is as crucial as the love. This is an excellent point that I really wanted to start this one off with for the reason that this really is much more than a movie to most people. To a lot of people, Star Wars is something that they do in their pastime. It's something that they constantly think about. It's not something that they just go see in the movie and then decide to go off base and then not think about it until the next film comes out. Star Wars means a lot more to that to a lot of people. It's helped a lot of people through a lot of bad times, a lot of good times. It's essentially been part of their childhood. And they associate memories with the release of these films or with what they were doing at that point in the film. Okay. So, another one, James Burradinelli, Rotten, score, 2 out of 4. It's too bad that the Star Wars saga has saved the last for worse. That's just the tagline that they gave for that gentleman. It's too bad that they saved the last for worst. So what he's saying in his review is if we go farther into it, he says, quote, Back in 1983, burned out after completing the original Star Wars trilogy, George Lucas thought he might be done. 22 years later, the release of Revenge of the Sith said that the saga was over, but as a brand, Star Wars was always too big not to continue. 
So he's essentially just going off with the fact that since George Lucas didn't make it, it's not going to be any good. That's what essentially the rest of his review talks about. So I'm just going to discredit that one because he's doing it based off of the person. Let's go to another one. Joe Morgenstern from the Wall Street Journal, a certified fresh, quote, a vast, convoluted, sometimes cluttered, intermittently thrilling, and thoroughly entertaining production that brings the Skywalker trilogy to a heroic close. Moving on to another one, we have David Sims from The Atlantic gave it a rotten score, quote, The Rise of Skywalker is a fitting for the thrills and limits of repetition. May it be the last episode of a saga that should have ended long ago. Going into his full review, he starts it off by saying, quote, In one of the very few moments in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker where the action slows down for a second, the beloved droid 3PO pauses to appreciate the heroic ensemble. I'm just taking one last look at my friends, he says. The kind of naked nostalgia is on display for every frantic minute of J.J. Abrams' new film, The Ninth, and supposedly conclusive entry in the newly dubbed Skywalker saga that George Lucas began with the first Star Wars in 1977. The gang's all here, every new and old favorite character one could imagine. For an experience so convoluted and overstuffed, I wonder whether the whole cast could board a flying kitchen sink for the final battle. Well, that is just convoluted in itself, sir. So I disagree with that. That doesn't, that's just a bunch of word soup. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. Michael Phillips from the Chicago Tribune gave it a certified fresh, saying, quote, It wraps up the trio of trilogies begun in 1977 in a confident, soothingly predictable way, doing all that cinematically possible to avoid poking the bear, otherwise known as a tradition-minded quadrants of the Star Wars fan base. This is the last one I'm going to read. I've read a few of them here, but this one makes the most sense since the first one I read in terms of how this should be concluded. This isn't supposed to be some outlandish story. This is the whole Skywalker saga. Essentially, when we got the original trilogy, the big twist was that Darth Vader was Luke's father. And in the prequel trilogy, everybody knew what was going to happen, so they couldn't judge it based off of the story elements. And now that we're going on to the sequel trilogy, everybody wants to judge it based off the story. But we know how it's going to end. The Skywalker saga... They've been the victors. They're going to be the victors. It's going to be predictable. You're not going to expect the bad guy to win, which is something I think a lot of people just aren't making that connection on. The fact that it's the Skywalker saga. And in order to end the Skywalker saga properly, logically, they would win. So I just want to keep that in mind and remind everybody of those facts that the Star Wars saga was getting all of these reviews especially on the Rotten Tomato scores from the past, because that's really telling on to where you can guess that the critics are going to go based off of the track record. Again, they gave The Last Jedi a 91%. Most people, including myself, have many problems with that. When I think of The Last Jedi, I think of the Luke, Kylo Ren, and Rey scenes. I don't care about any of the Canto Bite stuff, because in the end, Holdo just zooms through it and makes the whole Canto Bite portion completely useless storyline. They gave Solo a fresh 70%, Rogue One a fresh 83%, which is much lower than The Last Jedi. They gave The Force Awakens a 93%, which is fine. However, when you compare that to the the original trilogy, you get an 82, 94, and a 93. All of those also fresh. So what they're saying is that these new ones are not are just as good, essentially, if not better, than the old ones. They're saying that The Last Jedi is better than Return of the Jedi by a good 9% on Rotten Tomatoes. So these critics don't really hold their weight in water anyway. So I just wanted to give everybody that refresher that these critics are going to say negative things. Some of them are going to say positive things. Most of them have a bias, whether they want to admit it or not. You guys know my bias. I'm a Star Wars YouTube channel. I clearly love Star Wars. So I'm just putting it out there that the critics will say what they want, but that doesn't have to change your view of the movie. So that wraps things up for me here in this video. Thank you guys for watching. God bless, and may the Force be with you. You know, like I say, I, I've said it before, but uh, they're more than fans. They feel like family. So I hope they enjoy it, and if they don't, just keep it to yourself. If you enjoyed this episode, and frankly, even if you didn't, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to help spread the word, please give this video a thumbs up and tell your friends to subscribe. 
Please check out the official Star Wars Coffee merchandise, and don't forget to check out all of the content playlists on this channel, including The Rise of Skywalker, The Mandalorian, and much more.